Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation. How High Deductible Health Plans Work. Get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Remember that health insurance is part of our long-term risk mitigation strategy where we use the adage of measure twice, cut once, going through a formal process looking something like this. We're gonna set the goals, develop a plan to meet those goals, put the plan in action, review the results, and continue with that process periodically. We're now looking into high deductible health plans. Most of this information comes from Investopedia, how high deductible health plans work, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This is by Amy Fontinier, updated April 7th, 2022. So we've been talking about different types of insurance plans, focusing in on the health insurance here now, noting that health insurance can be a little bit more complex than say other types of insurance because most of the time we're insuring against some future event that might happen, might have a low likelihood of happening, such as a house burning down or something like that. But because of the extreme financial burden that that would have, we're gonna try to mitigate the risk insuring against it. We can have the same kind of thing for the health insurance uh, in the event that we have a, a big event health-wise that would be quite costly, we would like to mitigate the risk with insurance. But there's a lot of other laws and regulations involved as well that try to increase you know, the amount of insurance that we could be covered for, including possibly the more routine uh, type of visits. And so that makes the, these, these laws and just the healthcare industry themselves make the insurance a little bit more complicated in many regards as other types of insurance. So we're comparing and contrasting different kinds or groups of health insurance. We have now the, the how high deductible health plans work. Do you want to save money on your monthly health insurance premiums and have the opportunity to open a health savings account? So this is kind of interesting because notice that these plans are often ones that you would do if you're trying to basically save money, which means you would think they would be less in terms of the benefits that you're going to be getting. But then because of the laws and regulations that are involved, the government tries to step in and have other benefits that, that are kind of related to these high uh, deductible plans. So it's kind of an interesting situation. So if so, you'll need to have a high deductible health plan. So that's going to be the HDHPs we're talking about. Let's discuss what these plans look like, their pros and cons, and the times in your life when you might seek out or avoid an HDHP. What is a high deductible health plan, you might ask? And if you don't ask, I'm asking it for you, just if you didn't think about that question. According to IRS rules, an HDHP is a health insurance plan with a deductible of at least $1,400 if you have an individual plan or a deductible of at least $2,800 if you have a family plan. The deductible is the amount you'll pay out of pocket for medical expenses before your insurance pays anything. So when we're talking about a high deductible, we're going to say we got these deductibles that the, they're going to set certain limits at because the government then wants to put these other laws in place if you qualify for this HDHP types of plans. But the general idea would be, well, if the, if the deductible's higher, with the deductible works as we have seen, it's the traditional kind of health insurance type of system where you're going to say if some kind of catastrophe happens or if some event happens, then you have to basically pay the deductible before the insurance kicks in. So you would think that that could be useful for people that are gonna to try to self-insure to some degree, save up money, and possibly people that aren't uh, having the need to go to doctor visits all the time, possibly younger, more healthy people, and or people that, uh, that just can't afford the health insurance. And then, uh, and then when, when they have a need for it, they, you're gonna pay the deductible and then it'll kick in after the deductible safeguarding you, hopefully against the big event that would be financially kind of devastating. Uh, that's when the insurance will help you out in that case. So the deductible is the amount you'll pay out of pocket for medical expenses before your insurance pays anything. In addition, the plan's out of pocket maximum must be no higher than 7,000 for an individual plan or 14,000 for a family plan. So the out of pocket maximum is the most you'll have to pay in a year for medical expenses covered by your insurance plan. So if it goes over the deductible, you, you, there still could be circumstances where you have to pay part of it, for example, and then there's gonna be this cap that is the maximum. 
So that's, again, what you would like to be able to do. It would be nice if you can have self-insurance in the event of an emergency up to be able to cover, if necessary, the cap if some catastrophe happened. Because after that point in time, hopefully the insurance kicks in for that type of event. So advantages of high deductible health plans, the HDHP will usually have lower premiums than an equivalent health insurance plan with a lower deductible. So a higher deductible usually means that you're gonna lower the premium because that's less risk to the insurance company. And so that's the trade-off in just generally insurance terms for most types of insurance. For folks who don't anticipate many medical expenses for the upcoming year, it makes sense to minimize your premiums and choose an HDHP. So if you're not someone that has a lot of doctor's visits and so on, if you're young and healthy, then it might make it makes more sense then to have the high deductible one and have a cheaper premium and possibly pay for your own visits that you need to that you need to have where you're gonna have to pay more, as opposed to if you're in a situation where you're visiting the doctor a lot, then it might uh, actually be cheaper to pay for a higher premium type of plan which has more benefits for those routine types of uh, visits. So there's a good chance you'll save money, perhaps several hundred dollars or more over the year this way. Just be sure you can afford the out-of-pocket maximum in a worst case scenario. So the idea would then be, and I'm gonna self-insure possibly if possible, so that if that you know catastrophe happens, I can cover the deductible and I can cover the out-of-pocket maximum uh, if I need to, that would, that would be the ideal so that you're kind of covered in the event of that risk situation that would be a, a real tragedy kind of, kind of health-wise type of situation which could be financially costly. So if you can't, you could end up in medical debt and the added interest will make it even harder to pay your bills. A health insurance plan with higher premiums but an affordable out-of-pocket maximum might be a safer choice if the HDHP's out-of-pocket maximum is more than you can afford. Here's like an example comparison of the HDHP, that's the high deductible that we're looking at versus the non-HDHP. And we've got the premiums at the 1,500 versus the 3,000. So a significant difference can be there for the premiums, the amount you pay, the deductible being higher for the HDHP significantly for certain events uh, that could take place versus the non-HDHP, meaning you pay the deductible before the insurance kicks in. And then you could see in this example, we got the total cost before coinsurance at the 4,500. Note that the HSA is eligible for the HDHP versus the non-HDHP. And the rationale, you can think about why, you know, why exactly would that happen? You can, you can imagine that the HDHP is likely to be uh, taken by lower income people or possibly people that kind of want to do more of their own self-insurance up to like a degree, for example. And because possibly more low income individuals would be taking the HDHP because of the lower cost, then the, you can imagine Congress saying, well, that would mean that they might not have as much access to the preventative care or the routine kind of maintenance kind of stuff for the doctor's visits. And so we want to give them that in some way. So that's when they you got these other laws that come in like an HSA, which might be available, which could be helpful, but also can be a little bit confusing. So you gotta make sure that you're understanding how an HSA works, health savings account, if you have the high deductible health plan. So the options above show a, a, a situation where it clearly makes sense to choose the HDHP. With either plan, you'll end up spending $4,500 of your own money in premiums and deductibles if your medical expenses for the year are at least as much as your deductible. But with it, the HDHP, you're only guaranteed to spend $1,500 in premiums unless you know for a fact what your upcoming medical expenses will be. So also having, having the HDHP lets you contribute to a health savings account. So if you got that, that plan, again, the government puts in these other incentives possibly. If you're in the 24% federal tax bracket and you do, and you do incur $3,000 in medical expenses, you could use your HSA to pay for them with pre-tax dollars. So in other words, you can get a tax benefit if you properly use the HSA and use that for your uh, spending for the for the medical spendings in a proper way. So if you used post tax dollars, that same 3000 in medical expenses could cost you $4,000. 
if you choose the lower deductible plan, the non-HDHP, you could, could pay for $2,550 of your $3,000 in medical expenses with a flexible spending account. So now we have the FSA, the flexible spending account, if your employer offers one. So that is an account that typically would go through or be part of a benefit that might be offered through the employer as opposed to the HSA health savings account which you might be able to set up uh, on your own then you'd have similar tax savings with the non HDHP as well even this simple example isn't really that simple it's really not similarly most real life situations aren't clear cut as to whether you should select a high deductible or low deductible plan you'll need to do the math uh, for your own circumstances taking into account your likely medical expenses for the year and the premiums deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums for the available plans so we got the high deductible plans and preventative care so the preventative care those things that you're trying to do you know like the more routine kind of stuff <laughs> so if you do choose the high deductible plan you'll still have 100 percent coverage for preventative services from in-network providers before you meet your deductible because of the affordable care act requirements so now you've got the kind of you got this question in terms of what is kind of preventative care versus what is what is like a normal doctor visit type of scenario that wouldn't be preventative care preventative care now becomes like a key word with that normal maintenance kind of stuff because again you can see the laws and regulations are trying to make it so that people are going to get the preventative care and again you can you can kind of see how all of this distorts things because it kind of moves away from what traditional insurance was traditional insurance kind of was there to, to safeguard you against a big event that happens kind of like your home burning down for the property insurance and if we if we now have preventative care covered it's kind of like if you had car insurance and they're trying to get the insurance to cover the cost of like the oil and the, and the tire rotation and stuff like that you can see how that's going to distort you know the, the insurance costs and that kind of stuff you can't just you know if you change one thing and it's a free market everything else is gonna kind of change so now we've got this other definition for what what is it to be preventative versus other kinds of doctor visits so quite a few services fall into this category and you aren't responsible for any uh, co-payment or co-insurance for any of them so notice i might use that term like preventative care kind of interchangeably sometimes when i'm trying to say normal health doctor visits doctor visit type of situations but uh, you might use that term more strictly as well to decide what is preventative care versus <clears throat> other types of care for the purposes of the coverage so here are a, a few examples taken from the healthcare.gov which you can take a look at online so for adults abdominal aortic aneurysm one-time screening for men of specified ages who have ever smoked aspirin use to prevent cardiovascular disease for adults of certain ages blood pressure screening cholesterol screening for adults of certain ages at high risk uh, uh, colorectal cancer screening for adults 50 to 75 depression screening diabetes type 2 screening for overweight obese adults 40 to 70 certain immunizations for adults such as the flu shot for women, we have the anemia screening on a routine basis, the breastfeeding comprehensive support and counseling from trained providers and access to breastfeeding supplies for pregnant and nursing women. We got the contraceptives, food and drug administration approved contraceptive methods, sterilization procedures and patient education and counseling as prescribed by a healthcare provider for women with reproductive capacity, not including abortifacy drugs this does not apply to health plans sponsored by certain exempt religious employers breast cancer mammograph mammography screening every one or two years for women over 40 cervical cancer screening every three years for women 21 to 65 osteoporosis screening for women uh, over age 60 depending on risk factors well women <coughs> well women visits to get recommended services for women under 65. With regards to children, we've got the autism screening for children at 18, uh, at 18 and 24 months. 
We've got the behavioral assessments, the blood pressure screening, the depression screening for adolescents, the development screening for children under age three, hearing screening for all newborns, vaccines for illnesses such as whooping cough, influenza, and the chicken pox. The HSA eligibility, that's the health savings account. So as noted already, the other major advantage of having the HDHP besides typically lower premiums is that it allows you to contribute to a health savings account. So these can get a little bit complex, but if you're able to figure them out and combine them with the, with the high deductible insurance, you could save money with them possibly. So because the HSA contributions come from pre-tax dollars, you can save a considerable amount uh, on your medical expenses when you pay for them with your HSA. So in other words, your expenses that you got to pay and you're going to be paying possibly more of them due to the fact that you have the high deductible plan, you might be able to get a tax benefit from them if you properly use the HSA. So for example, if you're in the 24% federal tax bracket, a $100 medical bill will effectively cost you $76. You must have an HDHP to be eligible to contribute to an HSA health savings account. And in order to be eligible to receive any employer contributions to your HSA, so you might have employer contributions to an HSA as well. So you can discuss that with the employer. In fact, free money in the form of uh, optional employer contributions to your HSA is another potential benefit of having an HDHP and an HSA. In other words, you might be able to get an employer benefit by contributing to the HSA and get tax benefits uh, for that getting kind of like a form of compensation that has tax benefits for it rather than in the form of uh, just straight wages where you obviously would be paying taxes it'd be reported on the w-2 and so on so in addition you don't have to keep your hdhp forever to take advantage of an hsa in future years contributions carry over from one year to the next and you can invest your contributions to help them grow too uh, in the future, even if you no longer have an HDHP, you can use money previously deposited to your HSA to pay for health expenses. So you're gonna try to get the tax benefit by putting the money into basically this HSA health savings account in some form or another, possibly through the employer or possibly setting one up. And, and the problem with that is that the money's restricted in that case, because you gotta spend it on medical expenses, because that's the point. That's why you got the benefit from it. But obviously you don't know how much medical expenses you're gonna have from year to year. You're just kind of estimating. But if you don't spend them in that year, then the question is, well, what do I do now? I got this money in an HSA, it's kind of locked up. Well, you might be able to earn uh, revenue on it and then possibly take it out, hopefully be able to take it out in the future for qualifying reasons such as medical expenses uh, in the future, which would be the idea uh, and hopefully give a tax savings for that. So disadvantages of high deductible health plans. The big drawback to choosing the HDHP is having potentially high out-of-pocket expenses for the year. As of January 1st, 2021, the Affordable Care Act rule, rule states that the most any person can pay out-of-pocket maximum is $8,550 for in-network benefits, $8,700 uh, for 2022. The family maximum is $17,100, $17,400 for 2022. Previously, insurance plans could require that one person in a family plan meet the family maximum. This new rule limits your risk if you have a family health insurance plan. Once any family member has $8,850 in medical expenses, their costs may be 100% covered for the rest of 2021. So now you got to worry about those maximum out of pockets they could have. And ideally, you would like to be able to have enough money in the event that some medical problem happened to cover the maximum. The family plan's kind of interesting because you got these maximums for the family plan. But if one individual had the problem and they hit that 8,550, my interpretation is that, that that's the individual max for that, for that component. And then the health insurance might kick in even though the family max is at the 17 one in that uh, in that comparison so another potential problem with enrolling in an hdhp is that you may find yourself wanting to skip doctor visits because you're not used to having such high out-of-pocket costs so this is what the argument is you can see this from a 
political perspective. They're trying to kind of eliminate these high deductible ones that they cut. some people would kind of like to because they say that it disincentivizes people to do more of the preventative stuff, which now when I use the term preventative, you know, some of those preventative things, they're trying to get the preventative things to be covered in other, if they're under the term of preventative. But, you know, the normal routine kind of maintenance type of things that uh, are usually good, uh, good things to do or possibly could be good things to do for preventative or just to keep your be aware of your health situation may be things that you're less likely to do if you have those out-of-pocket costs related to them. That would be the argument. So don't choose an HGHP if it will cause you to fall sick or hinder your recovery because uh, you want to save money in the short term by avoiding doctors, procedures, or prescriptions. It will cost you more in the long term, plus you'll be physically uncomfortable. <laughs> so high deductible health plans and you. Whether or not it makes sense to have an HDHP depends on your life stage and the associated medical expenses you're likely to incur. In particular, you should weigh the benefits of lower monthly premiums against potentially uh, accumulating higher deductibles and out-of-pocket expenses that can add up and overwhelm some consumers. If you're young and healthy and rarely go to the doctor or take prescription medication, you'll probably save a lot of money by choosing an HDHP since the premiums are lower. So when you're young and, young and healthy, then it's more likely that, that they would pay off and you'd still be covered uh, against the big event that happens. That's what young, healthy people usually kind of forget that, that, that they, can, they can have a medical problem and they want to be covered against it hopefully it does just like the house burning down we hope it doesn't happen but you want to be covered if that happens and then you might also think that you can you can self-insure to some degree as well and and use the high deductible and possibly take advantage of the tax benefits too so if you're planning to have a baby in the near future an hdhp might not be a good choice since the cost of hospital childbirth are high and your out-of-pocket expenses could easily hit your high out-of-pocket maximum so obviously having a baby, a lot of doctor visits there. So you might hit the maximum in that case. So uh, it may actually be more cost effective to instead consider a plan with lower deductibles and lower out of pockets, even if the premiums are initially higher. Similarly, a HDHP also might not make sense if you have young children, since they tend to visit the doctor frequently. So, you know, if you're young and healthy, we usually mean like, you know, in the, oh, older than 18 and healthy, right? You're a young adult and healthy, but obviously children, you typically want to have more screening or just, you know, typically just torture the poor kids by making them go to the doctor and dance around with things in their ears and stuff. So, so which can quickly accumulate the deductibles. That could be costly. That kind of fun time could be costly. So when your children are older and if they and you are healthy and HDHP might make more sense. On the other hand, if anyone covered by your plan has a chronic condition that needs ongoing treatment, you might benefit from a plan with a low deductible. Finally, if you're older, you're statistically more likely to have higher medical expenses, clearly. So, so you may not want to take a chance on HDHP. But if you're still in good health and have no reason to anticipate uh, expensive healthcare costs, an HDHP might work for your circumstances despite your age. Whether an HD, HDHP will save you money always depends on the details of the specific plans available to you and your expected medical expenses for the year. An HDHP is not automatically a better or worse deal than an insurance plan with a lower deductible just because your circumstances fall into a certain category. You always have to do the math for your own situation, which is hard because you're trying to predict your medical costs in the future. Uh, so it's, it's not an easy thing to do. So how do I know if I, ha I have an HD uh, high deductible health plan? So if you have access to a health savings account, an HSA, then you have a high deductible health plan. This type of insurance has a lower premium and a higher deductible than a traditional health plan. Having an HDHP is one of the requirements for a health savings account and HSA. If your current health insurance plan for 2021 has a maximum deductible of $1,400 or $2,800 for family coverage with a maximum uh, deductible of $7,000, 
$14,000 for family, then it qualifies as an HDHP. What is the main drawback of a high deductible health plan? You could potentially be on the hook for expensive out-of-pocket medical expenses. So that's the trade-off. So you'll have to meet the deductible if your plan before uh, the plan starts to kick in for coverage costs. The plan will pay for preventative medical care such as routine visits and well baby checkups but an accident or unexpected illness could meet thousands of dollars in payments in medical providers. What is the, what is the main benefit of high deductible health plan? So if you are generally healthy and want to save for future health care expenses, the high deductible plan gives you access to a triple tax advantage saving vehicle, the health savings account. So the HSA can make sense for many people, especially those nearing retirement, because the money can be used for medical care in retirement, which can be nice if you could save that money up in an HSA, get the tax benefit for it going into retirement when you might be using more of that money for those medical expenses. What's the bottom line? What's the bottom line? An HDHP can save you money in the form of lower premiums and the tax break you can get on your medical expenses through an HSA health savings account. It's important to estimate your health expense for the upcoming year and see how how much you'll be re uh, responsible for out of pocket with an HDHP before you sign up. In some cases, a plan with a lower deductible will save you money, even though it will usually have higher premiums and won't let you have an HSA. In addition, if your employer offers it, you can use an FSA to get tax savings on your medical expenses with a lower deductible plan.